Hello and welcome to The Culture Bar, an arts and culture podcast series brought to you by Harrison Parrott. In our speed podcast mini-series of quick insights into music and culture from around the world, we talk to music industry professionals about the music of their homeland to give us a view into different music, composers, sounds and instruments which make music both unique and universal. Today we will be talking to artist and project manager Arna all about the music of Iceland. So Arna, please tell us a bit more about yourself. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Arna Margot Jonsdottir and I'm from Iceland. Uh, and I work as an artist and project manager at Harrison Parrot. I previously worked at Harpa Concert Hall and Conference Center in Iceland as a marketing associate. And I also managed Vikingur Olofsson Music Festival, Reykjavik Mutsumur Music, in 2019. I am a graduated jazz singer and I have a bachelor's degree in composition and I also play that piano. Fantastic. Very musical, Anna. I think we should dive straight in, seeing as this is a speed yes. podcast. Um, so could you tell us what has influenced Icelandic music? Yes. So up until the 18th century, uh, the tradition and style of Icelandic music was relatively untouched by foreign influences due to the country's isolation. As you probably know, we are an island. Uh, and it was not until outside uh, musical instruments entered the country that they began to influence the sound. Uh, and also looking at the classical music, it, it came to Iceland comparatively late and the first proper orchestral concert didn't take place until 1921 actually. Uh, but as the world opened, the foreign influences in Icelandic music became more notable and especially in regards to popular music. Uh, going over for, uh, to today, there is, uh, there is a quite widespread assertion that the unique natural environment in Iceland can be seen as the main influence when it comes to music creation in the country. Uh, this is actually a very popular motive when uh, reading for it articles about the music live in Iceland. And many musicians in Iceland uh, are actually getting quite tired of being asked about how nature influences their creativity. This uh, assertion also fails to acknowledge many social factors that influence the music scene. Uh, the close proximity due to the music scene being relatively small results in exciting collaboration and allows people to work across various music styles if they like. And many musicians are members of several bands that represent different genres. We have also older established musicians often working with young and up and coming musicians and providing guidance and assistance. It is often said that instead of a music industry, we kind of have more of a music community in Iceland, so to say. And I think that influences the scene and perhaps makes it uh, more free in a way and somewhat experimental. And there is also a good access to music education in Iceland and many children learn to play a musical in instrument when they are young. That sounds amazing. And I, I really lo love the idea of a music community um, that's a really lovely way to think about and to collaborate with uh, making music. Um, maybe that's something we should all try and do. Yes, exactly. I think, yeah, it, it opens a lot of possibilities to do kind of a, more of a community and not like this kind of an industry view on things. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely see how that must be so freeing um, when it comes yeah. to being creative with, with music and the arts in general in Iceland. So um, no, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and moving on, um, so what sounds um, define Icelandic music? For centuries, actually, yeah, Icelandic folk music was the long-standing popular music of the countries. Rímur, or what you call rhyme in English, is kind of the earliest form of the music and dates back as early as the 14th century. And they were actually chanted at evening session from written manuscripts. And people in Iceland actually mostly turned their backs against Rímur in the 20th century when the world kind of opened up uh, and they realized that compared to Mozart, chanting Rímur made us look quite primitive. So Rímur were therefore uh, almost lost actually and the folk music tradition in Iceland changed dramatically due to this. But today, popular music is probably what Icelandic musicians are best known for, uh, ranging from uh, indie and pop rock to electronic music. And there are also musicians breaking boundaries and working across many musical styles and experimenting with new sounds. Perhaps we can say that the experimental sound could be seen as a, a characteristic now since many musicians in Iceland are unafraid to combine styles and experiment with new sounds. 
And I think this also goes for classical music, but many of Icelandic's uh, leading classical composers are using sounds and uh, also nuances in their works rather than focusing on harmonies, for example. Oh, that's really fascinating. And um, I love the, um, the rhyme um, link. Do, do you know any rhymes, Arna? Oh, not that I can share on short <laughs> notice. <laughs> I think I can also maybe perhaps link you to, uh, there is a recording of an elderly lady uh, who actually was living during some period when the rhymes uh, were still kind of known. So maybe I can share that with you. Definitely uh, f flowing from sounds into instruments. Um, are there any instruments that you can only find in Iceland? Yes, we have what is called langspil. Uh, which is probably kind of yeah, the most recognized Icelandic instrument. And it, it is a simple member of the, it's called Fredit Sither family. And it dates back to the first half of the 19th century or earlier. And the typical setup is kind of one string, which is positioned over a fretboard for playing the melody. And then there are like two or three string drones. But there are also like other variations that exist. And you can play the instrument uh, with a bow or by hammering or kind of plucking the strings. There was also the Icelandic fiddle, a traditional Icelandic instrument, which was somewhat similar to the langspil, but its uses kind of began to die out by the middle of the 19th century. Amazing. And uh, do people uh, still play some of these instruments or, or, or not so much anymore? Um, yes, the langspil is actually, I think they have like several langspil uh, that are available to people. I think some of them, of course, are in museums and stuff. But langspil is, yeah, something that is kind of still played, yes. Oh, fantastic. Um, and it would be great, Anna, if you could tell us a little bit about maybe um, an Icelandic composer or a soloist um, who exemplify um, Icelandic music for you. Yes. Uh, so the first composer I want to highlight is Academy Award winner Hildur Guðnadóttir who is an Icelandic composer, cello player, uh, and a singer who has been manifesting herself at the forefront of uh, experimental pop and contemporary music. And I think Hildur is a great example of what I previously mentioned about Icelandic artists being experimental, because she is unafraid to explore new sounds. And actually it's quite, uh, speaking of like Icelandic instruments, she used, uh, it's called Haldorophone, it's a purpose-built electro-acoustic string instrument based on the cello, which was developed by uh, Icelander Haldor Ulvarsson. And she used this uh, instrument when she was creating the score for the Joker soundtrack in 2019. And that actually, uh, the soundtrack uh, secured her the Academy Awards for the best music original score. Um, so yeah, I recommend listening to Bathroom Dance from her Joker score where uh, the Haldora phone takes kind of the center stage. And the second composer I want to highlight is the late Þorkell Sigurbjörnsson, an Icelandic composer uh, who was born in 1938. He composed the music to Heir Himna Smidur, which is a, a medieval Icelandic hymn by poet Kolbeit Tumason, which was actually written in 1208. And this is one of the best known choral pieces in Iceland and has been performed in many countries actually. And I recommend listening to the album Thorket, uh, where Hamralia Choir performs many of his greatest choral pieces. But yeah, Hamralia Choir is a brilliant choir and they have actually been accompanying Björk on her, uh, on her tour around the world. She was actually in the choir when she was younger. What a, an amazing selection of composers to uh, get our teeth into. And um, I absolutely loved the uh, Joker soundtrack. It was just so iconic. And whenever I think of that film, I really think of the music. So it's really mm -hmm. amazing that um, she was able to compose that. Um, and then into our final um, section for the Speed podcast. Um, Anna, it would be wonderful if you could uh, give us a book, an album and a film recommendation so that our listeners can dive even further into um, Icelandic culture. So if you could begin with your uh, book recommendation, please. Yes, so for the book, I chose Independent People. Uh, which is by Nobel laureate Haldor Laxness, uh, which is a book that most Icelanders have read, I think. Yeah, it is actually 
for teenagers in Iceland is mandatory to read in school. But like anyone who hasn't read it, I yeah, I really recommend reading it. And it's about the hardship of the poor farmers in Iceland back in the early 20th century, kind of struggling to keep their independence on uh, isolated farms in the countryside. And yeah, the book is mainly revolving around the idea of independence and at what cost it must come and what should be worth giving up to achieve it, actually. Kind of on a side note, uh, Iceland did not gain independence until 1944. So a very important book for Icelanders then. And for, for the album, yes, please. I chose uh, Önnur Moses book with uh, Moses Hightower, which is an Icelandic soul band who writes brilliant lyrics. Uh, unfortunately, Icelandic for some, so not understandable to everybody. But their music can always kind of get you into a good mood. And I think if you can write a song about a coffee and get 1.5 million plays on Spotify, I, you must be doing something right, I think. Oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, you know, I think sometimes, you know, um, you don't always have to understand the lyrics to enjoy a song, do you? So um, I'm definitely no. going to look that up, especially the, the coffee song. <laughs> it yes. sounds amazing. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it's the case with Moses Hightower. You can enjoy it even though you don't understand it. The, the lyrics are just added bonus, but yeah, the music otherwise is great. It's brilliant. Fantastic. And then on to your final recommendation for film. Yes. So the film is Woman at War by Benedict Erlingsson. And it's a film about Hatla, which is, who is a choir conductor and a eco-activist. And while fighting to save the planet, she tries to reconcile her illegal activism with her upcoming adoption. Uh, so the, yeah, this is a kind of a brilliant film about uh, one woman war on the local aluminum industry in Iceland. And uh, the beautiful scenery of the highlands uh, of Iceland is at the forefront. So yeah, a lot of beautiful locations that you can see uh, in the film that hopefully will remain beautiful location and will not be used for other purposes. Thank you very much for your time today, Anna, and for sharing Icelandic music and culture with us.